you've ever wondered if you could put a clutch in your Mustang, yes you can and we're going to show you how to do it right in your driveway. Of course we're going to be on a lift just so we can film it a little better, but you will need average mechanical skill and a pretty good selection of tools. Also, beyond your new clutch kit, you're going to either want to have your existing flywheel resurfaced or pick up a brand new one. A couple other things to keep in mind, depending on the mileage of your car, you may want to go ahead and pick up a new clutch fork, a new pivot stud, new flywheel and pressure plate hardware, a new rear main seal, and a new transmission output shaft seal. If your Mustang is rocking a T5, well then you probably want to go ahead and upgrade to a steel bearing retainer as well. Follow along, we're going to get started with the disassembly. Disconnect your battery, remove the shifter boot, and remove your shifter handle. Make sure the transmission is in neutral and the parking brake is off with the car chocked. Jack up the car and support with jack stands. Mark the drive shaft and pinion flange for orientation and remove the four drive shaft retaining bolts. Slide the drive shaft out of the car and plug the transmission tail shaft seal. Remove the cat back to mid pipe hardware. Unplug and remove the O2 sensors if equipped, and remove the two mid-pipe to header retaining nuts per side. Disconnect the smog tube if equipped, and remove the mid-pipe from the car. Remove the clutch cable from the clutch fork. Pull the bell housing to cable retaining clip, and slide the cable free of the bell housing. Unplug all electrical connectors from the transmission. Remove the speedometer cable and position it out of the way. Leaving the bolts engaged, remove the two cross-member retaining nuts. Support the transmission with a jack. Remove the four transmission to bell housing bolts, as well as the cross-member bolts. Lower the jack and slide out the transmission. Grab some help if you need it. The transmission isn't heavy, but it is awkward. Remove the two starter retaining bolts and slide the starter out of the way. Remove the two lower block plate bolts. Then remove the six bell housing to block bolts. Remove the bell housing from the car. Here you can see the reason our clutch failed was one of the disc hub damper springs relocated itself. Remove the six pressure plate bolts hanging onto the pressure plate so it doesn't fall on you. Pull the pressure plate and disc off the flywheel. Looks like the disc hub broke allowing the spring to come free. Remove the six flywheel retaining bolts holding onto the flywheel so it doesn't fall and remove it from the engine. Pull off the block plate. Thoroughly clean everything for inspection. With everything taken apart, now's the opportunity to slow down and thoroughly inspect everything. Pay close attention because I'm going to walk you through everything that you're going to want to take a close look at. Start out with your input bearing retainer on your transmission, especially if it's a T5. If it's stock, it's probably worn, has several grooves in it, you'll want to go ahead and upgrade it to a steel bearing retainer. Ours has already been done sometime in the past and it's still good to go. Your bell housing spacer plate, if you notice anywhere around the starter hole, throw it away, put in a new one. An egg-shaped starter hole will cause your starter bolts to come loose and you'll probably even have engagement issues with, between the starter and the flywheel. Inside your bell housing, thoroughly clean and inspect your pivot stud and clutch fork. If either one needs replacement, replace both. That way you don't have any wear issues down the road. On the back of the motor, take a look at your rear main seal. If it shows any signs of dampness, replace it. All this stuff has to come out to get to it anyway, so you might as well do it now. Same thing with the pilot bearing. If there's any signs of wear, just go ahead and replace it. You can run up to your local parts store and rent you a slide hammer and a pilot bearing tool and it'll make the job extremely easy. If your car is still equipped with a stock clutch cable and quadrant, it really is time to go ahead and upgrade to an aluminum quadrant and an aftermarket adjustable cable. If you already have an aftermarket adjustable cable and it's got some years on it and it feels a little bit draggy, go ahead and replace it. It'll make your new clutch feel a whole lot better and it'll keep you going down the road without any failure opportunity later on. If your flywheel has a nice hue of purple and blue little check marks all over it, go ahead and chunk it. It's not worth resurfacing because those spots are now hard spots and it will not wear evenly even if you have it resurfaced. If it shows just normal rotational wear, you do have the option to drop it off in the machine shop and have it resurfaced or you can go ahead and replace it with a brand new unit. Take a look at all of your hardware. If there are any rounded off heads, any strip threads, get new hardware. You don't want to have anything break or strip out on you when you're going back together. For all you 79 to 85 owners, this is for you. Because this car is an 85, it still had the original 10 inch clutch in it. 
This is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and upgrade to the 10 and a half inch clutch that would be found in an 86 to 95 Mustang. This literally is just bolting on new parts as the flywheels are the same diameter and the same bolt pattern, so they'll bolt right onto the crankshaft. You will need a 10 and a half inch clutch, obviously, and you will need new clutch hardware. The difference is, on the 79 to 85, the hardware is standard thread and it has a shoulder on the bolt and that's what locates the pressure plate. On the 86 to 95 10 and a half inch version, there's actually dowel pins in the flywheel to locate the pressure plate and it uses metric bolts to retain it to the flywheel. Once everything is thoroughly cleaned, inspected, and replaced if necessary, now you can go back together with your new clutch. You looking for more tech videos for your Mustang or Lightning? Be sure to subscribe to LakeModelRestoration.com to see everything that we have coming down the pipe. If replacing the rear main seal, simply pry it out of place, clean the area, lightly lube the new seal, and tap it into place, being careful not to damage the lip of the seal on the crankshaft flange. If replacing the pilot bearing, use the slide hammer and pilot bearing tool to remove the pilot bearing. The center roller of the bearing will come out first, then reinstall the tool and remove the outer shell. Tap the new bearing into place. Position the block plate back on to the bell housing dowel pins. Align the flywheel holes. Don't worry, it'll only go on one way. Install the six bolts using thread sealer and torque to 75 to 85 foot-pounds. Quick tip, you can use a couple of pressure plate bolts and a pry bar as a flywheel holder when tightening the flywheel bolts. Make sure the pilot bearing has enough grease and spray down the flywheel with brake cleaner and thoroughly wipe it down. Install the three pressure plate locating dowel pins into the flywheel. Apply a very light thread locker to the pressure plate bolts. Slide the supplied alignment tool into the clutch disc. The raised part of the disc faces away from the flywheel. Engage the pressure plate onto the dowel pins and loosely install the six pressure plate bolts. Make sure the disc and alignment tool are still centered and torque the pressure plate bolts to 12 to 24 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Remove the alignment tool. Apply grease to the pivot stud pocket on the clutch fork along with the thin film in the areas that the throwout bearing is going to contact. Slide the throwout bearing into place and apply a very thin film of grease to the face of the bearing and a little to the top of the pivot stud. Engage the fork onto the pivot stud. Reinstall the bell housing and torque the six large bolts to 39 to 54 foot-pounds. Install the two small lower bolts. Apply a thin film of grease to the input shaft and the bearing retainer sleeve. Don't put too much as you don't want it to sling out and get all over the clutch disc. Lift and slide the transmission back into place. Support with the jack. Install the two cross-member bolts. Install and torque the four transmission to bell housing bolts to 45 to 65 foot-pounds. Install the cross-member retaining nuts, tighten them down. Follow up by reinstalling the speedometer cable, electrical connections, starter, clutch cable, mid-pipe, cat-back hardware, drive shaft, shifter handle, and boot. If you're running just an aluminum quadrant and an adjustable cable, run up your adjusting nut against the clutch fork until there's no slack and then give it a couple extra tightening turns. Run up your lock nut and tighten it down and test the clutch. Whenever you push the pedal in all the way, if it doesn't disengage all the way to where you can get it in gear, then crawl back under there, loosen up your lock nut, tighten up your adjusting nut a couple more turns against the clutch fork, tighten your lock nut back up, try it again. Do that until you get a good pedal feel. If you've thrown a firewall adjuster into the mix, well then all you need to do is tighten up your nuts down at the clutch fork and then use the firewall adjuster to make all your final adjustments. Screwing it out away from the firewall will tighten up the cable. Screwing the adjuster in toward the firewall will loosen the cable. And there you have it, whole clutch installed. Visit LakeModelRestoration.com for many more in-depth videos just like this one.